Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. So this is a chapter number two for a GCP, right? Google Cloud Platform. So today we are going to talk about what are the different services provided by GCP and, uh, uh, you know, and we will talk about uh, most of the important GCP services. Important to know because same thing we have done in AWS also, like we have compute, storage, networking, storage uh, services are available in uh, AWS. Same thing in uh, Google Cloud Platform also, we have different types of services over here. So uh, this is a diagram that I have taken from uh, Google Cloud uh, uh, documentation. We have uh, important services like we have compute, then we have a storage, we have big data, we have uh, networking services available over here, and then we have machine learning services. So what I've done, I have prepared my own notes in the form of diagram, and then we will talk about uh, multiple services, which are very important to know if you are uh, really looking for uh, a Google, a Google Cloud certification, or uh, if you really want to know about GCP, you should know about at least these, okay, different types of services provided by Google Cloud Platform. So first important service, guys, we are going to talk about that is uh, the compute service. So this is the compute service where uh, four important things are available: compute engine, Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes engine, app engine, and the cloud functions. So compute engine is used for the VMs to uh, you know to create the VMs to create the machines over there. Like I want to create one Windows uh, VM or Linux VM over there, or or I want to create one instance over there. So compute engine service is very very popular tomorrow you want to uh, uh, take one VM which is having 8 GB RAM or some storage you have to use compute engine services provided by compute second thing is that uh, to run your containers so to run your docker containers and then you can use kubernetes uh, engine service uh, you can use it which is coming from the compute services so you can execute your uh, you can orchestrate or you can uh, manage the all the containers for that particular application and then uh, you can use this compute Kubernetes engine services. Second, third thing is that the app engine. <clears throat> app engine is also very popular. Let's say you want to deploy one some very a big heavy application that you want to deploy and which is having a lot of multiple components and the dynamic components. In that case, uh, I'll be using app engine services over there. Fourth one is the cloud functions. Cloud function is just like uh, we have uh, AWS Lambda, which is serverless. A service provided by uh, GCP. Same thing we have AWS Lambda also. This is serverless. Remember this thing. This is serverless. So serverless means that uh, we just need to create a function and we need to put that particular function to the GCP cloud functions. And then uh, we don't need to take care about the infrastructure, how many instances, how many uh, servers will be created. Automatically it will be done by the cloud function. So for a small application, let's see you want to generate some data or you want to uh, generate some load over there or you want to uh, you know you want to create some uh, database queries uh, insertions you want to do or uh, you want to log uh, generate some log data or something like this for small applications you can use cloud function services for small or lightweight applications so this is serverless so remember people might ask you a uh, cloud function is a serverless same thing in aws we have lambda functions are available that is another compute service provided by this same thing for compute engine in AWS. We have EC2 instance here. We have a compute engine is available like that. So this is about the compute. Second part is that is the storage part. The storage part is again divided into multiple four to five important sections. One is the big table. So storage means to, to store the data, to store the uh, resources, to store the information, right? So let's see you um, creating one application where I need uh, no SQL uh, database implementation where I'm not bothered about the ACID implementation or ACID rules. So in that case, I can go with the big data which provides like a no SQL database. So we know that no SQL database like we have Cassandra, we have MongoDB. Similarly, big data table is another database that is provided by GCP, provided by Google uh, Cloud Development Team to maintain the data in the form of no SQL database. Then we have the drive that is just like uh, Google Drive. We have a uh, cloud storage. We have S3 bucket in AWS also. And same thing, we have cloud storage. So all your data, all your files, all your documentation, you can store in this particular cloud storage, which is provided by GCP storage services. Then uh, do we have any RDBMS database? Yes, uh, we have cloud SQL, which is, uh, which, is sub which supports SQL database. It means we support uh, SQL databases, RDBMS. And that name is uh, Cloud SQL, which is quite popular. 
and uh, you can use cloud sql to store the data in the form of rows and columns you can hit your sql queries and everything so this is services provided by a storage service from the cloud spanner cloud spanner is again that is uh, i would say the super set of cloud sql which is like a relational database once again with a scaling so if you have large amount of uh, uh, data and large amount of uh, the storage that you need with respect to a relational database and the scale is very high let's see uh, some e-commerce application that you want to deploy and then uh, and the customer uh, multiple customers are there and multiple products that you want to maintain and for that particular product also a lot of information you want to maintain in different tables and the scale is very very high in terms of uh, uh, let's see during a thanksgiving day or during uh, christmas or during diwali season a lot of uh, requests are coming and uh, you really want a good scale and want to create multiple set of rdbms over there in that case cloud spanner is the right choice for you guys for uh, small uh, scaling you can use uh, cloud sql for a small applications you can do that then another one is the cloud data store that is like quite interesting recently they added which is uh, no sql database with some sql uh, implementation that you can do that sql implementation means that you can add the asset uh, rules you can add it as per the rdbms and there's some sql uh, plus no sql database the combination of both the things you can get it so if you have such kind of requirement where you want to maintain uh, let's see some sensor data or iot data you can use no sql database but let's say same time you want to store some product information or customer information where the schema is uh, structured in that case you can go with uh, sql database and then the combination of both you can use it with that when you have totally unstructured data in that case, you should go with the no. Uh, you should you can go with the big table over here. That is completely uh, data schema less database. You can use it over here. So we are not going to talk about each and every databases or storage services, guys. I'm just giving you the basic idea. It's really good to know whenever if you are getting in, okay, getting into a GCP cloud or any cloud uh, tech, you should know about what are types of services they provide. Now the third one is the big data, which is also quite interesting. So big data is for the you know to uh, to maintain the data, how exactly they will maintain the data, what kind of flow of the data, what kind of management services they provide for uh, to maintain the data. So then one component is there that is another service is there that is called BigQuery. So BigQuery is for uh, data warehouse. So Google provides uh, yes, they are having their data warehouse and to process a large amount of data. So let's see, you have the world population. Uh, data that you really want to maintain and let's see for India what is a population and then you really want to process that particular data and store in a particular system in that case a BigQuery services that you have to use to maintain the data in data warehouse so which is also quite popular provided by GCP then we have PubSub you must have heard about it that PubSub PubSub is that the getter data it will behave like a middleware service which will stream the data and in, uh, ingestion into that uh, into the system, into the GCP system uh, using the PubSub. So uh, let's say some log data is coming, right? Some a huge amount of log data, logs are getting generated. In that case, you can use this particular PubSub uh, services over there. Then uh, do they provide any ETL products? Yes, for a data flow or for data lake flow, they provide uh, ETL services also. So uh, just like we have Informatica, we have data storage, we have SAP data services. <clears throat> so same way we have data flow ETL services provided by GCP. So let's say you, we just need to, or let's say you want to process some batch data and you want to extract the data from the batch data processing and some streaming data, and you really want to broadcast that particular data into some system or into GCP, you can use a data flow services over here like that. The fourth one is the data catalog. Cat data catalog uh, is a type of data what type of uh, metadata that you are using it so for that entire management point of view you can use this particular service i have never used personally i and uh, but yeah i have seen that according to their documentation that metadata management services you can use it for to manage the type of data into the system you can use this data catalog or meta data management okay now the fourth one is so this is the first one this is the second uh, service this is the third one and now the fourth one is again interesting that is called ai artificial intelligence or machine learning services uh, ai services they provide that uh, couple of services uh, you can see that uh, the first one is that let me just put it here so natural uh, language api service which is for unstructured sentiment analysis this is quite interesting 
what do you mean by natural um, language or sentiment analysis sentiment analysis guys that uh, let's say you have uh, twitter so uh, twitter platform and you really want to read all the tweets during the election season and i really want to analyze the data after that so i want to use i can use this natural language api services provided by gcp and uh, unstructured sentiment analysis you can do that at what will be the result of uh, uh you know uh, for this particular election and uh, what will be the outcome and let's see so for uh, the voting polls you can create that so such kind of application then where you want to read the unstructured uh, data let's say coming from a log files or coming from twitter account or coming from some uh, comments and you really want to analyze and you really want to use do some sentiment analysis over there you can use natural language api you can do that so twitter is one of the best example read all the tweets process it and because we need in machine learning in artificial intelligence we need the data the huge amount of data we will process by using this particular api and then we will do some sentiment analysis over there we will generate some analysis that okay yeah this time this particular government will take place or okay something like this we can decide some rules accordingly although it's not 100 percent uh, prominent but yes this is about uh, artificial intelligence and the machine learning then they have the vision api that is uh, read images they can you can read the images and you can uh, uh, provide multiple images and a huge amount of images you can do that and for the image processing they can use you can use this particular api uh, with the help of artificial intelligence and then you can uh, generate some outcome and the data processing you can do that the third one is the speech api which is also very good that uh, speech to text so let's see some broadcast is happening or some uh, voice messages are coming or something like this then you can really want to convert that into a text conversion let's see some any um, for the security point, uh, point of view also for uh, national security agencies also they are uh, getting some uh, you know uh, random speeches or random voice messages and uh, and they are just reading it and they can convert they can use this speech api convert them into text and display somewhere uh, into some data and then into some system and then we can analyze that particular data so they support around 120 languages over here and for the speech api which is coming in the form of some let's say chinese or maybe arabic or maybe uh, english or whatever some other languages they can uh, uh, whatever the speech is there okay 120 languages the voice messages they can convert convert into a text and you can use it accordingly the last one is the translate api which is just like a google translator the conversion of the you know the one language to another language text which is uh, spanish let's see to english or chinese to english or uh, english to chinese or whatever you can use uh, translate api which is again provided by ai other than that guys that we have uh, two more uh, uh, services which is uh, management and the network Networking services to manage all the services and then uh, networking like cloud and VPC and then uh, uh, then we have socket and then uh, IP addresses and everything all those uh, uh, things will be handled by you can use networking services over there okay so uh, if you really want to see that you can see this particular diagram you can take you can take the screenshot this diagram is uh, easily available on Google also you can check it I got it from there only so in compute, as I told you, compute engine, Kubernetes to run your container, app engine, and the cloud function that is uh, stateless. This is a stateless. Stateless. What do you mean by stateless? What do you mean by stateless or serverless? Sorry. What do you mean by serverless uh, system? Serverless system means that okay, there is no server is running. You simply just create a function and give this particular function the form of let's see jar file or zip file or a typical class. Also, you give it to this particular service. They will process it. Okay, so that's a different topic altogether. What is uh, serverless and the stateless? Same thing that we have management services like uh, trace, logging, debugging, monitoring. You can do that. Networking, as I told you, that uh, load balancing, cloud DNS, firewall rules you can define. Okay, cloud VPN, VPC you can define like that. Storage, I have already told you, big table, which is uh, that is uh, NoSQL database, cloud data store, cloud spanner for big application cloud SQL for a small application where you want RDBMS and the cloud storage you can do that for uh, for drive point of view this is just like we have a Google Drive or OneDrive or Box Drive they provide cloud storage service in AWS we have S3 bucket for the storage same thing for big data identity security and the machine learning as I told you that for machine learning we have a, a, a cloud machine learning natural language APIs cloud speech APIs 
cloud vision apis and cloud uh, translator apis are available like that for big data we have data flow for data lake for etl services we can do that and iot core also i have never seen that i mean never worked upon but yeah so that's not important you have to know about each and everything but you should know what are the different services provided by uh, this particular cloud system and it's quite like a popular it's provided by google obviously there are a lot of people are using it and there's a big competitor with aws and uh, microsoft azure as well now uh, i'll show you practically what you do simple you go to that uh, uh, cloud.google.com or you simply write that uh, google cloud you simple and simple go to cloud.google.com and you simple go to console so in the next video i'll tell you what you mean by console and all those things how to install one uh, windows uh, vm or something like this but you, so all the services are available you can see uh, on godo simple go to uh, gcp console so when you log in this is called gcp console guys what you have to do you simply click on this and here you will see that uh, see this these are the billing services these are the billing obviously that for every service that you are using it you have to pay for it okay these are not free and then we have compute services as i told you kubernetes cloud functions cloud run vmware engine and then then the storage point of view i told you data store uh, file store storage data transfer these are the databases that are available as i told you that big data and uh, spanner and the sql you can see that for networking vpc network services hyper uh, hybrid connectivity and the network security network intelligence services are provided operation point of view if you really want to do some error logging and then uh, uh, debugging monitoring uh, profiling tracing okay that all those things you can check it over there like that and then different tools are available so api gateways endpoints workflows you can create catalog you can create like that so these are the different tools are available then for big data big data is a huge service where uh, composers as i told you that uh, data scanners are available then pubs up okay you can create pubs up for the logging the data and then then they have big query as a their a data warehouse you can create that data catalog financial services also they can add it for healthcare services also uh, you can create and then like that then the artificial intelligence they have provided natural language processing they have a uh, Uh, translation APIs, they have vision APIs and video intelligence. Also, recently they have added over there. So, video intelligence I haven't covered in the diagram, but yeah, they have added uh, video intelligence also. Okay, so these are the guys uh, services are available provided by GCP. You should know about all these services and make sure that okay, people might ask you time of interview if you have worked upon this, and uh, if you are looking for Google Cloud Platform certification, GCP certification. Uh, information about these services and the knowledge about these services are very very important to know but i'm not targeting for uh, okay for these tutorials we are not targeting for the certification we should know about what type of services what is the use case of each and every service we will uh, i'm not going to cover each and every service but let's see for automation point of view or for uh, let's see vm creation point of view we will be using this particular service if you really want to execute let's see uh, a serverless right um application you can use cloud functions like that if you really want to store the data um, rdbms data we can use cloud sql over there like that so uh, no doubt about it is really useful for development really useful for devops really useful for uh, testing point of view for automation point of view there are multiple use cases you can do that you can uh, use one vm start your selenoid or maybe you can uh, create your docker containers over there and then run your docker containers using the kubernetes engines and all those things you can simple do that okay guys so that's all for this particular video i hope you liked it and you have some at least basic idea about uh, google cloud gcp thank you so much guys if you really like this particular video and if you really uh, like this particular series please click on subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified for the next video and till then take care bye bye